Good morning, boys and girls of the grid. This is Micah broadcasting from the Light Runner. It is Monday, January the 19th, and I thought I would share with you a little review of the year 2015. Um, I went through all of our numbers. I uh, compiled and tabulated them. They're all in a spreadsheet. And I thought I'd share with you just some of the uh, economics of uh, how the car is done and uh, just how much the car has saved us uh, in gasoline. So I've got autopilot engaged, which is a really nice way to do a broadcast. It's a nice uh, clear day, minus 15 outside. And uh, I am uh, in, uh, in the vicinity of Edmonton, Alberta. All right, so really quick overview, and then I'll take you through kind of a breakdown of uh, month to month of uh, being having the car, and then I'll do a kind of a wrap up at the end. This is a picture of the Light Runner car in the movie Tron. If you haven't seen the movie, it is awesome. Go check it out. This is what we named our Tesla after uh, our Tesla is called the Light Runner. I thought uh, I couldn't let another video go by without introducing you to our uh, car mascot. Every one of our vehicles has one, and uh, for the Light Runner, it's uh, Tron Mickey. We got him at uh, Disneyland a few years ago, and um, yeah, he's pretty cool. He just sits up here on the dash and uh, keeps an eye on the Light Runner for me. Anyways, back to your spot, Mickey. Overview of uh, 2015. So we got the car on March 21st uh, of 2015, and I think that was a Wednesday. It was an awesome day. Uh, they unloaded it, and of course uh, we did a, a nice long drive to our first supercharger visit in Canmore, Alberta that, uh, that very night. But um, here's what it looks like. So last year, from March 31st to December 31st, uh, when we stopped driving, we drove a total of 44,612 kilometers. And I've calculated how much money that cost. Now, the cost is uh, really what we've paid for electricity because we charge in three places. We charge at home. I call that the high performance wall charger. That's the one we got with the car. We charge at public charging sites, uh, which around Alberta, they're all free. All of the L2s are free. Uh, sometimes you have to pay for parking to get the charge, but uh, the charge itself is free. And that's because the electric companies have a little thing about uh, who can and cannot resell electricity. So the nice people that put out the chargers don't even bother with that. They just give away the electricity and hope you'll come uh, spend money at their business, which is, you know, I think working really well. And then the third type of charger we use, of course, is the Tesla supercharger, uh, also free because that was included with the price of our car. So out of the well, the total 44,612 kilometers, our cost from our charging at home came to $375.84. Not too shabby. Now the breakdown of that charging was, uh, was pretty interesting because um, when you look at what we did at home, we charged for the year, 45% of the time we were charging at home. 19% of the time we were charging at public chargers and a whopping 37% of the time we charged at a Tesla supercharger. So less than half of the electricity that this car used to travel 44,612 kilometers was paid for by us directly at home. Here uh, or back home in Calgary, we pay eight cents a kilowatt hour. We're on a fixed rate. We had locked in a, a deal, and so for I think for another two or three years, we're at eight cents a kilowatt hour. So over the years uh, prior to owning an electric car, to give you an idea, because we do a fair bit of driving, we camp a lot in the summer. Um, our driving has always been the same. Uh, we've been spending anywhere from. Uh, on the low end about nine thousand dollars a year to uh, our highest year was um, 13,000 where's that number uh, there it is 13,976 so anywhere from nine thousand to fourteen thousand dollars a year that is what we were spending on uh, gassing up our uh, our vehicles and in the past we had a Dodge Grand Caravan which was our family vehicle, our, our primary vehicle. I used that for work and we used it to do everything we did as a family wherever we went. That was the car that we used. Uh, we also have a truck that we use for camping. Uh, so of course that is uh, pretty thirsty on gasoline. And uh, then prior to the Tesla, 
we had a Nissan Leaf, which is uh, our other electric car. So we got rid of the van, pushed that out to make room for the Tesla, um, sold uh, both my kidneys on the internet to get the down payment for the car, and uh, life is good, except for the, uh, the kidney problem. But other than that, life is good. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, first uh, full month with the car, April 2015, uh, we did. 3,686 kilometers of driving cost us $42.88 in uh, electricity. That was at home. Uh, that was a big charging month at home, about 69% at home, and then the rest of it was uh, public and superchargers. And this was an important month, a milestone, if you will, a life milestone, and I'll tell you why. I've been driving since I've been 14 years old. So since age 14, when I really started driving legally, uh, I have been buying gasoline every month. April of 2015, first month that I did not pay any money uh, for gasoline. It was zero dollars. Our gas bill in April, that was the first month, full month owning the Tesla, zero dollars. Uh, can't, I can't even tell you how excited I was about that. I mean, one thing is saving money is great, but zero dollars on gasoline, just priceless. Okay, and then we got into May where we drove uh, 3,425 kilometers. Um, that cost us $32.32 in electricity. And again, uh, significant charging at home. 61% of our uh, charging time was at home and 5% uh, on public. That month we did a fair bit on Tesla superchargers, 33%. So got some uh, good use out of the uh, Tesla superchargers in May. All right, and then we got to June. Um, June, we did a lot of uh, kilometers, 6,035 kilometers in June. About half of that, 52%, we charged at home, and 15% we charged at public chargers, and then the 32%, almost a third, was done at Tesla superchargers. So, I mean, when you look at that, 6,000 kilometers, 3,000 kilometers uh, roughly was charged uh, on free electricity on uh, L2 chargers and on Tesla superchargers so unbelievable completely different by the way from what we do with the uh, Nissan Leaf when people think electric cars that's really the kind of electric car experience they think about it where you can only go a short distance you're charging at home pretty much all the time which is what we do in that other car this one though you can charge it anywhere you, you've got a wide range you can cover and you can actually get to chargers in other cities to make use of them so that's been pretty good okay and then we got into the summertime so in july big camping month for us we're out every weekend we uh tammy does a great job of having everything and everyone packed up on the friday afternoon so that when i am done work uh end of the day friday we hop in the vehicle, the truck, we tow the trailer out and the kids, and we are camping until pretty much midnight Sunday night we come home. We come home really late, we squeeze every minute out of the weekend, and we go hiking and biking and fishing and, and boating and all that fun stuff, and uh, just have a great time. Um, so this summer, we, we brought the car with us because we went camping to a few spots where I would leave Tammy and the kids, because the kids are off in the summer, Unfortunately, I'm not. I still have to work. So I would leave them at the campsite and I would drive back to the city. And we usually camp about an hour, an hour and a half outside of Calgary. And so I would commute uh, in the electric car back to the city, go to my meetings, do my work. And then uh, some nights I would come back out to stay with uh, Tammy and the kids. And some nights or some weeks I would just stay, you know, at home and then come out on the Friday to hook up with them again for the weekend. Now the nice thing about that was at the campsites we go to there's plug-ins so we plug the trailer in so we got power and stuff which is really nice um, and uh, and then uh, when I was out there I would also plug in the car so the car would charge up so I had plenty of range to get back to Calgary for meetings and uh, in Calgary I would charge at home or at public and get back out. When we went into August, we drove a whole lot more because I did a lot more commuting. Uh, I think Tammy and the kids, they didn't spend any time at home in August. They were camping pretty much the whole month, uh, except for I think one week. We did 4,737 kilometers, spent $36.88 in August on electricity. 46% uh, of that charging was at home, 35% was public chargers, and 19% 
was uh, on Tesla superchargers. So not too shabby at all. Um, and some great camping months that we did with the car in the summer. Oh. Camping note. Um, you know, a lot of people tell us that when we go camping and we plug in with electricity, they say that's not real camping. Real camping is when you go with a tent and an inflatable mattress and you lay, uh, you know, two inches off the uh, cold, hard, wet ground. And I have to tell you, before I get the comments, we've done that. We did, we did probably five years of that when Tammy and I were uh, before kids. When we were dating and when we were married before kids, we did a lot of camping in a tent. And it was great. We actually, back then, we had a nice vehicle. We had a BMW 328i convertible, a, uh, a fossil car that uh, was uh, used as our camping vehicle. And so we would go out and camp. And uh, I suffered through everything from those air mattresses that would deflate. And then I would lay on the cold, hard ground. Now, lucky for Tammy, she figured out that if she just laid on top of me and used me as a mattress, she would be comfortable and I would wake up with my elbows locked and my hip numb and I couldn't move. It was, uh, it was not a fun camping experience, but we did it. And, you know, we got out usually once in a while. Since we've had the trailer, we camp more than most people do in, in a tent or in a trailer. Um, we're usually getting use of uh, 50 days or more a year out of our camping trailer. So we have some great, great fun in the outdoors and we do, like I said, everything. Hiking, fishing, biking. And now the Tesla is a uh, part of that mix. Okay, well, when September came, also a big month, um, you know, work continues, kids are back to school. Um, and we still do camping on the weekends in September. We actually go right up until October, mid-October. Uh, we did 4,469 kilometers in September. Cost us uh, only $17.20. September, I started playing the game of seeing how little I could charge at home and trying to charge just off of public chargers, L2s and Tesla superchargers. So I only charged 23% uh, at home and 49% uh, on public chargers. Those were L2s. And then 28% on Tesla superchargers. Those were for uh, business trips. And then October comes along. October is uh, one of my favorite months because it's uh, my birthday month and it's also Tammy's birthday month. We were uh, both born in October. Um, 4,220 kilometers and uh, cheap at uh, $54.08. Now, 68% of that charging was done at home. You know, I got, it's just easy. You get home, you plug in, you don't worry about it. I didn't have to uh, run around to different public chargers. So I only did 14% on public and 18% at uh, Tesla superchargers. Now, what's interesting is, is uh, throughout those camping months, we use our truck. That's why, you know, I'm, I, I do have gas usage in those months. Um, and in October, it would have been a zero use month, but that's the month that we put all the toys away and we take the trailer in, we get it winterized so the pipes don't freeze and you do that kind of stuff. Now, I had to uh, put that, the, the trailer away, so I used, uh, I think, only $67 uh, worth of gas. So our, our gas usage is, is minimal. You know, it's, it's only as needed to, um, to use the truck. Um, October was also a really big month because for my birthday, Tesla decided to release auto steer, autopilot, auto park, all of those amazing features that basically made the car feel like we just got a $10,000 upgrade. So all of a sudden you wake up the next day and the car is auto driving. And I've got a video that shows what that uh, experience was like for us. And we have been using that a ton. When I do highway driving, love uh, auto steer and the only thing that I don't like is that when it snows out here it covers the lines on the road and auto steer you know it needs to see the lines now I know that uh, the software that's running underneath the covers can actually do the driving even without being able to see the lines it can track vehicles in front of us um, and as long as it's, it can pick up road edge definition which the camera can um, you know, it'll, it'll, uh, it will do it. So I suspect there's some future upgrades that will expand it even more. And of course we know there's going to be hardware upgrades in future Tesla. Ooh, and then we get into November. November was a big month for us. 9,268 kilometers in one month. I don't think I've ever driven that much in any vehicle in one month. Big month because we went to Disneyland. 
Um, so that month we only charged 22% at home. We were only one week in, in Disneyland, but uh, managed to charge 22% at home. Only 8% on public chargers and a whopping 70% off of Tesla superchargers. Pretty cool because the Tesla supercharger is free for us. So 70% of that 9,268 kilometers uh, was paid for or for free by the Tesla supercharger. We went from Calgary to uh, Anaheim, uh, California, to Disneyland. Uh, it's about 3,100 kilometers to get there and then about 3,100 kilometers to get back. And that was really the first um, sort of big winter month that we had with the car where we got to experience on the way back home um, heavy snow, cold temperatures. I think we got to minus 18 on that trip. So the coldest we'd seen with the car up until then. Uh, we drove in slush. We drove slippery roads. So got a really good feel for what this thing can do with all-wheel drive. It was, it was amazing. Um, that drive, I do have videos of that. Now, when you think about that, that driving distance, and we did it in, we did it in three days and two nights. Uh, we left our house, and made it down there. Um, so we spent two nights in a hotel room um, with the kids. We pushed pretty hard, and we made it. But for that amount of driving, I was so surprised how how nice of a trip it was. It wasn't tiring. Uh, it was actually relaxing. I think, and, and because of two reasons, and I talk about it in the video, so I won't go into it too much here, but it was because we had frequent stops to charge. You know, you have to stop to charge. The car forces you to, otherwise you won't go anywhere. Um, so you get to rest, and during those stops, I would edit video, I would read, I would catch up on e work email, uh, or I would sleep, or we would go to the bathroom, we would go stock up on some snacks, we would uh, have a meal, so a lot of those stops were really restful. They were helping us rest. So when we got back in, I was ready to go for another two or two and a half hour stretch, three hour stretch, no problem. So just a great, great way to travel. And now that I've done it, you know, I, I like it. Oh, one other note, um, you know, just to tell you how much of a relaxing trip it was, the kids didn't complain at all. And if you were to ask me, would I do the trip again? I would say, yes, absolutely. I would do that drive. Again, the only thing is it cuts into holiday time, so I would want to make sure I had lots of time. And I'd actually want to make the drive even longer just so we could stop at various uh, attractions along the way. There's uh, some really cool places. Somebody had commented that in California, uh, there's uh, a place where they film a lot of the Star Trek TV shows. Um, it's a, a national park, and you can actually go see a lot of the backdrop that they used in the Star Trek episodes. So as a... Uh, as a sci-fi fan, that would be pretty cool for me and my uh, nerd kids to go visit. And of course, Tammy, she's a nerd too, so we would like that. Okay, December, we ended the year with a bang because in December, again, we spent zero dollars on gasoline. So uh, two full months last year where we spent no money on gasoline. And I know this year in 2016, we're going to have a lot more of those months. We've already made it now to January the 19th without... Uh, spending a drop on gas and we won't need to spend a drop on gas probably until April when we uh, thaw out our trailer and start camping again so uh, January, February, March, April four months will be uh, zero months I'm expecting anyway December of last year 4,805 kilometers a big month again 59% was done charging at home 17% was done charging via L2 chargers, public chargers, and 23% uh, of those charges were done on Tesla superchargers. We did a couple of big trips in uh, December too. We went to uh, Grandma and Grandpa's, uh, had a great Christmas out there, drove through Vulcan, Alberta, st saw the statue of the Starship Enterprise. First time I did donuts in the Tesla, where you turn off, uh, they call it slip, uh, slip steer, or yeah, slip steer, I think. A um, fun, fun button. And uh, we did uh, a trip to Edmonton to the water slides as well and um, had a lot of fun there. So really, really nice, uh, nice way to end the year. And uh, yeah, no problems whatsoever with the car. So again, a quick summary. What did the year look like for the Light Runner? Well, we drove 44,612 kilometers. We spent $375.84 of our you know, electricity money uh, from our house. 
which is really interesting. Uh, oh, let me just uh, tell you we, where we charged. 45% off of um, the home charger. 19% for the whole year was done off of public chargers. And 37% of our charging and range was done off of Tesla superchargers. So we got really good uh, good return on that uh, that supercharger network. Um, when you compare that to the next cheapest vehicle that we had, uh, which was our van. It was a Dodge Grand Caravan, uh, 2008. And that van cost us $7,137.92 in gasoline. That's how much it would have cost to do that driving distance in the van. And the way I figured that out, it drive the van, it costs uh, between 16 and 17 cents per kilometer to drive. The truck costs about 25 cents per kilometer and if I'm towing the trailer that number goes up. Uh, I have a motorbike that I rarely ever drive now I'm gonna sell it. Uh, the motorbike cost five cents per kilometer to drive. So the motorbike's very economical but really hard to make videos and phone calls on a motorbike. The car, the Tesla uh, and the Leaf for that matter have cost us one cent per kilometer and that's the money that I spend. Now if I was if I was calculating all of the kilometers, it would probably be more like three or four cents per kilometer. But because I get to leverage public charging that's free and Tesla supercharger network that is free for me, uh, my cost per kilometer to move this car is one cent. It's unbelievable. That's one Canadian cent. One Canadian cent is a quarter of a US cent. It's maybe one fifth of a euro. It's unbelievable. Very, very cost effective to drive an electric vehicle. That's why I love it so much. Uh, and here's where it gets really interesting. So in the nine months, if you take that $7,137.92 and you subtract the $375.84 we spent on electricity, you end up with $6,762.08 in cost savings. Um, that, if you extrapolate it out to a full year, which is what I'm forecasting for the coming year, would come to about nine, just over $9,000 Canadian. That's how much, just in, in uh, energy cost to move the car, we are saving per year, $9,000. Now, that's not even looking at the other costs, right? When you look at maintaining the van, we had to take it in regularly. Usually about twice a year we would go in because we do a fair bit of driving. So you've got your oil changes, you've got your checkups, and then you've got a very nice dealership model that is really good at suggesting additional fixes. So we would normally end up spending slightly over, and some months, some years it, it was over 3000 but on average, it, I'd call it about $1,000 a year. That's being very conservative. $1,000 a year on our gas vehicle. On the Tesla, last year in maintenance, and we had one service, we've got one scheduled now, but uh, we spent $0 in maintenance because it's part of the purchase price. We actually built it in. We get eight services. I get to schedule them whenever I want. Should do at least one a year recommended um, or two if you drive more. Cost us nothing. So uh, for the Tesla year, you know, first nine months of uh, the first year, zero in maintenance. The van would have cost us over a thousand. So the total savings between, uh, you know, the van versus the Tesla is for us, for my family, and now keep in mind, we drive a fair bit, but it's $10,000 a year. $10,000 a year. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's, for us, that's um, two holidays a year for the whole family. So I built a spreadsheet that would look at, you know, comparing a electric car like the Tesla, and I built it so you can compare the Leaf or any other car versus a gas car versus how much kilometers you drive and then I also built in financing because some people will finance their cars um, you know how long would you have to own a car like this uh, to actually make it break even when I do the an analytics I look at how much would a, a gas car cost how much does the Tesla cost it's kind of like that same same you know type of feature functionality and then how much are you saving over time that basically lowers the cost of the Tesla and eventually gets it to costing less than what the gas car would cost. So when I look back, when we were looking at replacing the van, uh, we had had it for just about eight years. I said, you know, we need something like a 
It's the Escalade. It's not Ford. The Ford Expedition. Uh, we looked at the Escalade. We looked at the Yukon. You know, the, the bigger vehicles that can carry all of our family and all of our gear. Uh, you know, they're they're priced in the $80,000 range. When you put in the options comparable to what we got here, they're not cheap at all. I mean, the van wasn't cheap. The van was uh, about forty. $45,000 when we bought it with the options that we had. So what I need to do is take that $10,000 of savings and knock that off the Tesla price every year until I lower it to the point that it's less than an equivalent gas car. For us and for our driving pattern right now, it's looking like that break-even point will be about four and a half years. That's if I drive a minimum of 60,000 kilometers a year. I'm thinking we'll, we might even get up to 70 some years. Um, so that that number will come closer to four years uh, for payback. So that's what I'm I'm predicting or forecasting is that in four years this car, which I will still be driving, will cost less than an equivalent gas car, and it will just continue to come down. Pretty cool, saving ten grand a year. That's big money. That's um, that's a lot of money. So pretty excited about that, and we've had just a lot of fun driving this car uh, in the last video that I put up we actually did a uh, 850 kilometer weekend all on level 2 chargers um, and all in the severe cold it got to minus 26 degrees Celsius it was uh, Friday was minus 26 Saturday was minus 26 most of Sunday was at about minus 16 and then Sunday afternoon uh, it, it warmed up but the car did great we are warm it's just like any other car you get in you drive well people of the grid that's it for this uh, video just wanted to give you a really quick update and summary on how we did uh, economically with the car last year got some uh, great savings and uh, some great trips with the car looking forward to uh, a lot of uh, great trips in 2016 and uh, doing a lot more videos we got some exciting uh, trips planned we've got some snowboarding trips to the mountains that we're going to do We've got uh, a trip or two to Kelowna that we're going to do because there's a new supercharger over there that uh, I need to go check out and visit family. And, uh, and they have cherries there in the summer and fresh fruit, which is just amazing. And what else? Yeah, that's it. Hope you like the videos and uh, click on the subscribe link. There'll be more to come. Lots of good information. I'm going to do uh, a bit of a comparison video and show you uh, what life in a Leaf looks like compared to life in a Tesla. Um, and uh, got to tell you, life in the Tesla is the way to go. But uh, anyways, I'll uh, share some of that with you in future videos. Peace out.